Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I hope you all are doing extremely well. So in this video, we are going to solve uh, today's problem of the day on the Geeks for Geeks platform. So today's problem is find whether path exists, right? So we are going to understand about the problem first, then the logic part, and then we'll be proceeding to the code part, right? But before proceeding further to the video, if you are new to this channel or if you haven't subscribed my channel till now, then guys do consider subscribing my channel. It will motivate me to create more such content for you and make sure to join our telegram community as well. We are already a family of 7000 plus members there. So make sure to join the link for joining is given in the description itself, right? So let us start with the problem statement now. So the problem says given a grid of size n cross n filled with 0, 1, 2, 3, check whether there is a path possible from the source to destination. You can traverse up, down, right and left. So these are the four directions where you can do the traversal. The description of cells is as follows. A value of cell 1 means source. Source is like from where you have to start. A value of 2 means destination. So when you reach to that node, so that value 2 means you have reached to the destination. A value of 3 means blank cell, right? A value 3 will denote a blank empty cell. And 0 means a wall, right? So what we have to do is, so there are only a single source and a single destination. So, so that's what the problem statement is, okay? So we have to determine what? We have to determine that if there is a path possible from source to destination or not, okay? So, for example, this is the grid given to us. Uh, these are the elements present. 3, 0, 3, 0, 0, 0, uh, 3, 0, 0, 0, 3. And all these are the elements. So, here they have provided an explanation. We are getting the output as 0. It means the path is not possible from source to destination. Right? So, here you can see uh, they have mentioned that there is no path to reach as 3, to reach at 3, 1. That is at destination from 4 to 3. That is source. So, source here you can see. Source is where? Here. So, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Right? 4, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 3. There is our source. And where is the destination? There is the destination at 3, 1. So, there is no path to reach to the destination. And hence, we are getting output as 0. Now, here is our next clip. We are having 1, 3, 3, 2. Now, where is the source part? Source is at the 0, 0 index. Right? This is our source and this is our destination. So you can say there is a path 1, 3, 2. This is a path uh, to reach to the destination. Our destination is at 1, 1 position. Right? And hence we are getting output as 1. Okay? So whatever task is, we don't need to read or print anything. Our task is to complete the function is possible, which takes the grid as input parameter and returns boolean value true if there is a path. Otherwise, it will return false. Expected time complexity and space complexity they have specified. Okay, so let's understand about this. I hope the problem statement is pretty much clear for you. Well, most of you must even, okay, determine that what we can use here. Either you can go with the, like most of you must be wondering about to go with the DFS or BFS algorithm, right? So this problem we'll be solving, like in this video, I'll be solving with the DFS algorithm. So what we'll be doing is simply nothing much. So let me explain you the logic part itself. So here's our function. Uh, is possible that is returning a boolean value so here we are using this visited array to keep track of the indexes that we have already visited right now what we are doing is so first we have to find the source value right we have to find the source value when we have got the source value then from this value the index where we have found is we will be starting traversal now we can traverse in the four direction right left up down so we will be traversing so for that what we are going to use we are going to use our DFS algorithm. So here you can see this is what this loop is doing. Like as soon as we have found grid ij equal equal to 1. So what we are doing is we are continuing with our DFS algorithm to which we are passing our grid, our visited array uh, and the index ij. Okay. So here what we are doing is in this function we are simply applying the DFS algorithm. So first of all here we are handling the boundary cases. Now while doing the traverses there is a possibility that we are moving out of the bounds. Right, so we are making sure here, like we are handling those cases. Like if i value is less than that of 0 or j value has been greater than equal to grid 0 dot line, means it has extended the column part, or i value is extended the row part, or j value is less than 0, or there can be possibility that we have come across a wall, right? So they have specified like uh, 0 is indicating what a wall, 
right? So if this is a wall, we cannot proceed ahead, right? So get I j equal equal zero, or in the visited array part, like we have already visited that particular position. So if a visited i j is equal equal to zero, so in that scenario, we are simply returning false. Otherwise, like in this if part, what we are checking that if we have got our destination means if grid of i j that is equal equal to two, it means we have got our destination. So we have to simply return true, right? Otherwise. If that is not even the case, so now we have visited that index, right? We have visited that position. So what we are doing here is we are marking that i j th position as true. Okay. Now here we are just simply traversing through all the four directions. So we may, we are making a call to the find path function itself, where we are passing uh, by tweaking the by tweaking the positions value grid with i plus one j, then i minus one j, then i j plus one, then i j minus one. Right now, you can simply use the arrays as well for storing these indexes for positions like that we have to visit. So for now, this is how I have made the call. Right now, if any of these values d1, d2, d3, d4, so these are the four calls that we are making for the four directions. So if any of these directions, by making the call, if we are getting true as the value, right, it means we are able to reach to our destination. Right, so that's what we are doing here. That return d1 or d2 or d3 or d4. So if any of these is true, the we'll be getting what true as the output. Right, so and that would be returned here. Otherwise, if there's a no path, uh, there's no path possible from source to destination. False will be returned. Right. So this was the complete uh, code for this particular problem. Complete logic for this particular problem. Right. So I hope that you must have understood it. The problem statement, the logic part, and the code part also. So so make sure to drop a comment in the comment section that what would be the time complexity for this particular approach right and make sure to subscribe my channel and do like this video thank you everyone for watching